Bienvenidos a mi cocina. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making enchiladas mineras. It is an iconic dish from Guanajuato in the very center of the country. It's a really, really delicious, hearty meal that's made with tortillas that are dipped in a salsa guajillo, served with braised chicken, potatoes, and carrots. Mi Cocina is a story of where I went, what I ate, and how to make it. And this was an amazing meal. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the salsa guajillo. It's a really simple salsa. There's not that many ingredients, but everything in this dish is like super flavorful. What I'm doing now is I'm just taking the stems and seeds out of the chilies. So the guajillos are really earthy. They give a really beautiful red color to the dish. And the cascabeles are a little bit more spicy. Usually the, the guajillos are pretty common in most grocery stores. If you can't find them, you can use uh, New Mexican red or Californian red. You really just want that color and there's like an earthiness. It's almost like a sweet paprika type flavor. The cascabeles are gonna give us a little bit of heat. So if you can't find those, then you can use uh, chili de arbol, a little bit of cayenne or a little bit of red pepper flakes. Whenever I am using dried chiles, I typically remove the seeds because they're a little bit woody. And if your blender isn't really super strong, you may actually get little pieces of the seed in there. But more than that, they will actually add a little bit of a tannic flavor to your salsas. And then I'm using two garlic cloves. And the beauty of this salsa is that you literally just throw everything in the pot. And then I have some black pepper, oregano, and salt. And I made some homemade chicken stock. I use a lot of chicken stock in this book. And to me, it just, there's nothing better than, you know, having that as the base of your flavor. Um, if you don't have homemade chicken stock, obviously you can use box stock, you can use water, you can use veg stock if you like, but I always try and keep some fresh chicken stock around. Okay. Now, all we're gonna do is take this to the back and bring it to a boil. And then once this comes to a boil, we will cover it and let it sit for about 30 minutes and all of the chiles are gonna soften up, everything in there, all the flavors are gonna meld together and then we'll blend it and it's good to go. Okay, so the chilies came to a boil. We're just gonna put these to the side. All we need to do is just let them hang out there. And I'm making room for my comal. So a comal is just a large flat surface that you heat. So in this case, I'm using black steel, but I also have some that are made out of clay that are really, really beautiful. I'm going to start heating this up and then we will get the tortillas ready. These tortillas are from my friend Victor in Tepic. Um, which is a town, I guess, probably about, what, three hours from here, right? Yeah. Yes. Victor's corn is all heirloom varieties. They're, uh, in some cases, they're actually very rare. Um, and they just have the most incredible smell and taste. And so these are the tortillas that I'm going to be using. What we're going to do is we're going to essentially waterproof the tortillas. We're going to just brush them with oil. So I'm going to use like a few tablespoons of oil. I just wanna give them a nice little coat. If you've ever eaten an enchilada where the tortilla just disintegrates, it's because they didn't treat it first. So you really need to do something to it. Enchilada actually means to bathe or to surround in a chili sauce. So this technique was a way to get the tortilla sealed and waterproofed, but also to use less oil so you could taste more of the salsa. Okay, so these are all coated and ready for the kumal. Because there's oil on here, they're not actually going to stick. You can actually see the oil starting to kind of like bubble and you'll see like little bubbles in the tortillas themselves. That's your indication that it's ready to flip. One of the things that I, I wanted to do with all of these recipes is I wanted people to like not feel bound by the written word. Like I want you to experiment. I want you to make these recipes your own. There, now we have 
Tortillas for everybody. We're heating this big pot back here. That's where we're gonna start the chicken. We're gonna brown it. It's gonna take a little while, and in that amount of time, I can prep the rest of the vegetables. I'm gonna add a little bit of vegetable oil. So this will be about two tablespoons. I just wanna coat the bottom of this, of this pan to make sure that the skin doesn't stick. Okay, so I'm seeing a little bit of smoke back here. So I'm gonna start the chicken. I'm gonna put it skin side down. And that is exactly what you wanna hear. One of the things that I tell people whenever you're doing any meat or anything where you wanna get something really crispy, the skin, is you just need to leave it alone. I think a lot of people sit here and they're like poking it, trying to move it around. And then they're like, oh my God, it's stuck. What am I supposed to do? The chicken will let you know when it's done. So you basically put it down and then just walk away and let it just sit there for, you know, six to eight minutes. And then when the chicken skin has rendered its fat and is really, really nice and golden brown, it will release itself from the pan. Let it do its thing and we'll come over here and we'll keep prepping. Because these carrots are super thick, I'm gonna cut them in half lengthwise, and then I'll cut them into two inch pieces after that. And the potatoes get peeled and cut into two inch pieces. So we basically want a similar cut for the potatoes. Okay, I think these are ready. So yeah, so on the second side, we don't need that much color because it's really just the, uh, the chicken flesh. So we'll just go ahead and pull these out. And we're gonna just throw in our vegetables now into that same pan. Sorry. <laughs> As the vegetables release their juices, all of that liquid will basically help to scrape up all of these like beautiful, delicious chickeny flavors on the bottom of the pan. And I'm gonna add some salt just to help the vegetables release some of their juices. I reduced the heat on the veg and they're getting caramelized. And so while they're cooking, we're gonna blend the salsa. So these chiles have been sitting in this chicken broth. Oh, wow. Oh my God, smell that. <laughs> Ay, there you go. Okay, everybody smell. <laughs> mm. um, so actually you can see like the chiles are really soft. This is what you're looking for. I don't like to boil mine. I actually just like to steep them. So you bring the, the water or in this case broth to a boil and then they get really, really soft. I find that if you boil them during this stage, um, they just start to lose their flavor. And I don't know, I don't think it's necessary. So you can see there's no big pieces and that's your cue that like this is done. So you can stop and start and, and look at it. Um, it was about a minute on high. And normally I tell people when they're making salsas in a blender, don't blend it on high because you incorporate a lot of air, but this salsa we're gonna cook. And also it's really important that it get uh, as thin as possible. So I'm just gonna give it a little taste. Oh my God. Well, wow. it's really good. Now we're just ready to put everything in the pot. And then we're just gonna layer the chicken on top. So now everything's in. We're going to cover this up. We're just gonna let that simmer until the vegetables are really tender and the chicken is falling off the bone and it's gonna be really, really delicious. Okay, so while the chicken is cooking, let's go, let's go chill out and I'll tell you about Doña Lupe.
Guanajuato has always been one of my favorite places in all of Mexico. People described it as like the crown jewel of Mexico because it's like so beautifully preserved. It's a Spanish colonial town that they discovered silver in the mountains. And so it was a very wealthy town. And so a lot of the Spaniards that moved there built these incredible haciendas in the 15 and 1600s. And I hadn't been in 20 years. And so I had posted on social that I was heading to Guanajuato and I'd asked for recommendations of where to go and what to eat. And literally every single person that wrote me back said, you have to go to Doña Lupe's. She makes these incredible enchiladas mineras. And it was a little bit hard to find. And so one thing that I'm very good at is finding things with my nose. And so I just, I literally was just like walking these streets and just smelling the air. And I found this like unmistakable scent of guajillos and chicken. And I was like, I bet that's it. And sure enough, like I walked up on this tiny little, I, I don't even know what to, how to describe it. it. It looked like like a really small living room. It reminded me of my grandmother's house. Like when I was little, she would open the door and she would give me this really big hug and she would she would kiss one cheek and g grab and pinch the other one. And I really got the sense that that was what was gonna happen uh, when I met Doña Lupe. And I talked to her and I asked her if I could record her and she said, of course, mijito. And my grandmothers have been dead for years, but at that moment, I had a grandmother again and, and she was cooking for me. And that was the beauty of those enchiladas in Guanajuato. I wanted to make my version of it. You know, the way that I look at all of the food in this book is that it is a love letter to the people that cook the food for me. Because Mexico is so beautiful. It's so full of talented, creative, passionate people that are cooking because they love it and they want you to love it too. And there's no way to replicate that in a book. The best way to do it is just to go and meet that person and eat their food. Okay, so the chicken is done. And we're going to stir in a little bit of cider vinegar, and that's just gonna wake up all the flavors. All right, so you can see how beautiful this sauce is. Mercado Pino Suarez is like the place that I buy, I would say 90% of all of my ingredients. And there is one vendor that has the best dairy. They also have the most incredible manteca. And so whenever I need queso or crema, I always get it from them. So what I'm doing right now, this is a queso fresco. This is a, a fresh cheese. It's similar like to a farmer's cheese in the US. It's just a simple cow's milk cheese. It doesn't really have a lot of tang, but it's very, very creamy and it's, it's just really fresh. <laughs> and we have sound effects by Jerry. Okay, so that is everything we need, and now we can start assembling. All right. So this is the super hot chicken and veg. Oh, oh it smells so good. So what I'm gonna do is dip the tortillas into the sauce. Basically reheat them and coat them really, really well. And then once they're nice and coated, you just put them on the sheet tray. I like working on the sheet tray. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of cheese. Not much, this is not a Tex-Mex enchilada. And then just fold it over. The woman that, that styled the food for the shoot is, I, she's amazing. All right, Caroline's is better. Caroline, you were a genius. I love you, I wish you were here. Come back. <laughs> so because I love you guys, that can be your plate and I'm just gonna make myself a smaller one. This is Wow, I'm 
playing mine now. <laughs> Miko Sina hits the stands on May 3rd, 22. So make sure you order your copy. And also make sure you hit like and subscribe and you will be notified as soon as there's another Miko Sina episode. Okay, I'm switching. This is your guy's plate, or I guess Jerry's. Is he gonna eat the whole thing by himself? Like, are you eating the whole plate? You bet. He's wow. <laughs> okay, well, you know, I show live your life. Good. All right. Oh. Mm. There's something so incredible about a good tortilla and the chiles. That combination, it's, it's just a classic Mexican flavor pairing. That toasted corn plus the guajillo with the chicken. Mm. All right, I'm gonna go in a uh, little, little papa, the aurea. That actually, might have been almost better than the enchilada. <laughs> like, they pick up so much of that flavor, they're just like little sponges soaking up all of that sauce. Oh. All right, I've tasted enough. Are you guys ready to eat? I'm yeah. ready, yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, so do you have to put your camera down or do you, like, do I feed you? How does this work? Oh. Um. <laughs> Do you mean to cut it for you? Like, how are you gonna do it? <laughs> do, you, do you mean to put the easy rig on? <laughs> sure. <laughs> wow, that was a really big bite. Mm. Wow. Thank you for inviting me to your cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's it for this week's episode. <laughs> I really want you to try this dish. Obviously, it's a crowd pleaser. You can adapt it using whatever vegetables you like. You can actually, you don't, you can even make it uh, vegetarian if you want. Swap out the chicken for a squash or other vegetable that you really are into. And next week, we will be traveling to Oaxaca, Chiapas, and Guerrero to make some tamales. Stay tuned.